Welcome to a new tutorial. This time I show you how to create this artwork in only 30 minutes in Blender. We will be using sculpting to carve out holes, define edges and add textures to our model. With a special lighting setup and subsurface scattering enabled, we aim to create realistic materials. And we'll explore the free color grading suite DaVinci Resolve and its amazing tools to quickly get the results we want. So let's dive right into Blender. Okay, within Blender, let's delete the default cube and add in a new text object as we do with every part of this tutorial. Let's type a letter H and set the alignment to center and leave the vertical placement at the base level. Let's select a new font. In this case, I will use Times New Roman because I think this, um, this type of font fits the um, piece pretty good. Let's convert everything into a mesh and scale this middle part a bit up because actually to turn that into cheese it um, would be a bit too small and it would look kind of unrealistic. We're not gonna worry about um, making good topology today so simply extrude the triangulated uh, parts and scale these top and bottom parts a bit up because as I said earlier um, it would be it would be kind of unrealistic if it would be uh, so thin in the final um, final image. Okay, now with that out of the way, let us scale our mesh a bit up and uh, apply all transformations, mainly worrying about the scale. Now let's switch to the sculpting mode, and in there, go to remesh, smooth normals, and remesh. And as you see, it was, uh, the resolution was a bit, was a bit uh, rough uh, to um, get the correct size. Let's reduce the voxel size a bit. And now you can see it tries its best to remesh it as quad topology, which, which is pretty cool. So let's uh, enable matcap materials to see uh, a bit better what we're doing. And um, yeah. Now let's start sculpting. Um, in the sculpt mode with uh, grab brush selected and a pretty large size, we're now going to deform the mesh because at the moment um, this letter is a bit too perfect since it was an actual font and of course um, everything that's made out of cheese is a bit irregular. It is not perfect and um, this is uh, so the small imperfections we're going to add now. Um, keep in mind if you're sculpting anything um, to go from the largest details or the largest shapes to the smaller details um, uh, and uh, make uh, it exactly in this chronological order because you can't easily go back and change the broad shapes um, if you're too much focused on the details. So uh, what I'm doing here is um, going um, in and using smaller and smaller grab pr brushes and using shift to smoothen out um, certain areas. And I'm doing it not only on the front view, but in the side view as well, because this is um, very important to keep it. Uh, keep in mind that we're working in three dimensions. And um, yeah, this is what we're doing here. Let's go into uh, the modifier panel and add in a sub uh, multi-resolution modifier, give it one subdivision, and then you can go one level of detail smaller. Um, now, what I'm doing now is smoothing all of the corners and the edges um, because they are a bit too harsh for my taste as well. Since it's cheese, it should be pretty smooth, um, almost like it's melting somewhat. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is what you see me doing here. I'm going all over over all the edges and making sure that they are smooth. Smooth. I'm not worrying too much about the backside because in the end you're not actually going to be able to see it but if you would rotate around the object you should of course do the same over there you could use a mirror modifier for that but mm, now i'm going to smooth out all of the edges with a large large smooth brush pretty simple nothing too complicated here Next up, go in with a blob brush and um, change the fall off settings a bit to make kind of these holes in this in the cheese. And um, you can play around with the fall off to get the result you want. Play around with the radius and draw a bit um, 
the way I feel like it's looking good. Uh, sharp, I didn't like sharp very much and I think in the end I switched to a smooth or um, something like linear for example. I think linear in this case seems to work best for what you're going to do here and then draw in a few holes wherever the cheese has its holes. So it reduced the strength, increased the radius a bit or decreased the radius. And this is a bit of playing around at finding the right, right um, settings that fit your need. And make sure if you're drawing these holes to draw on the um, edges as well, to draw in the edges, this is what makes it look real. Don't just draw on the main surface and first make a few larger, larger holes and um, make some from different angles as well. Draw a bit more in and a bit less. Vary, vary with the, with the um, intensity and the depth. And uh, have a look at visual balance um, to make this image look good. They are, should be placed uh, roughly evenly around the object. And um, then reduce the radius and go in and uh, make a few smaller ones. Again, as I said earlier, going from the larger details to, to the smaller ones and to even smaller, you can zoom in to change the, the size, you can zoom out to change it and um, place them not evenly spaced, not 100% evenly spaced because in reality uh, with cheese, if you have a look at, at um, reference images, uh, this isn't the case as well. And um, instead, go in and place them uh, directly besides each other, uh, each other and um, don't forget to draw some from the bottom, from the sides and in different perspectives like uh, I'm doing here and make it look not too uniform but again You see me using the smooth brush or pressing simply pressing shift while using a different brush um, to fix some of the shading issues, some of the uh, pinching issues because um, a lot of times the geometry gets a bit too close to each other and this creates these harsh corners which I'm now going to smooth out a bit and um, yeah, make some holes that intersect with, with each other. This is a pretty cool effect as well. Now let's switch to a different brush um, and uh, the brush I'm going to use now is the pinch brush and draw around all of these edges because um, despite these holes being round the edges are often very very sharp and very well defined and um, since this isn't the case at the moment um, you can help that a bit by using the um, pinch brush given a bit more intensity and drawing around all of these edges to really make a, a, a sharp transition and to separate these um, these holes from the from the main mesh, but don't use that effect on the on the um, edges of the whole text, but just on on all the places where uh, there is a hole in in the cheese. Okay. Now you can use flatten to flatten out, out of the centers of these um, holes um, because um, they shouldn't look too uniform and uh, this is a good way to get a bit more visual interest in these, in these um, kind of areas. After that go into the details and draw with a clay brush to add a bit of texture to the surface of the cheese because at the moment it was a bit too a bit too smooth for my taste but in reality it is a bit irregular and there are a few harsh harsh corners and um, yeah a few layers on top and uh, you can use the clay brush tool use the flatten tool use the crease tool to make uh, somewhat of um, harder shapes not so smooth and not so soft but they should be a bit harder and they give a bit of texture. Since this mesh will be shaded a lot with um, uh, subsurface scattering, um, you will be able to see these uh, small, minute textural details. And um, yeah, it really pays off in the end. It makes everything look more realistic. And finally, I'm going to go in with a smooth brush and add a bit more of uh, irregularities, remove of some of the, the, the uh, harsher corners and make everything look a bit more organic. With, as I'm usually saying, with organic shapes, it is um, the case that you 
that you need to get rid of the this this perfectness this um, um, and make it a bit more look a bit more real by giving it some imperfection and now let's uh, create a backup duplicate it to a new layer and rename your layers um, and keep them tidy to find everything back once um, you're going to the next step. Which will be adding in a new camera and changing the render settings to cycles. Um, I like to enable adapt adaptive, adaptive sampling. Um, I like to enable um, denoising in the viewport as well as the render settings and making it uh, 1080 by 10 dp as a square image. And now I'm going to position the camera wherever I feel like it looks right. Make sure the letter is uh, visible in the frame and not too small um, and move the camera and the lights as well as the floor and the background which I'm creating now into their own separate composition. This is the floor you see me creating a lot of times. Simply extrude the main mesh and bevel this edge right there and this will create kind of an infinite background. So now I'm changing uh, change the focal length to 58 millimeters zoom in a bit this crushes the perspective a bit and then I'm going to add an environment texture I'm using an image of an old environment old and in industrial hall which um, instantly gives uh, a cool lighting to the scene I love this um, texture very much use it a lot of and I use it in a lot of renders and um, yeah then let's go into the shading tab let's color or background in, in this kind of uh, reddish color, make it a bit darker, remove a bit of the saturation. And um, yeah, this will be an interesting color contrast between between the yellow cheese and the red background. This works very well uh, together um, with these products and uh, play around with the roughness and um, all of these settings. I like to give it a, a medium contrast in the color management as always. And in this um, case, let's add in the cheese texture, which is basically pretty simple, nothing too complicated here. Let's set the base color to this kind of yellowish color, kind of like this. You can now see a lot of the bounce light from the floor. Um, then enable uh, subsurface scattering, as I said earlier. And to see this in effect, let's add in an area lamp right uh, from the start and place it on top of the on top of the uh, letter. Don't move it too far away. Um, make it pretty large. This should be a broad light source coming from above, and you can work in the 3D perspective right there. And uh, make it a bit smaller. Don't place it directly on top of the letter, but rather a bit uh, angled uh, from the front to um, really give the uh, shadows um, or really create shadows in the in the uh, holes in the cheese but illuminate it um, from the front and um, play around with the intensity of that light. Maybe angle it a bit from the side, move it a bit up top and then I duplicated it and um, this is very important if you're working with subsurface scattering, since this will scatter the light through our main mesh. Um, you should have some light coming from behind to really be able to see it. So make a very small light source on the left and on the right hand side with a lot of intensity to really illuminate that cheese from behind. And um, this is what really creates this uh, this real, um, real look. Let's increase the subsurface scattering by a lot. Now you can really see how this shines through. This is the same effect used um, uh, to create skin, for example. You can create plants with that. Um, organic matter in general looks a whole lot better with this effect applied. And um, <clears throat> now you can play around with the roughness because cheese has a pretty high roughness depending on the cheese you have. But um, this is something I wouldn't trust my eyes with. I, I would go in and look at reference of actual cheese and compare it to that what I, I have. Because people are pretty, pretty 
uh, able to distinguish pretty easily uh, able to distinguish the a real one from the fake one so uh, especially concerning the roughness uh, i think it's very important to co to look at reference um, reference images now increase the light intensity of the key light which is my main broad light source from the front a bit because i felt like it was missing a bit of intensity and uh, yeah now you can see that uh, really coming together and um, with this subsurface scattering enabled you can see the details in the cheese. If you like the tutorial consider supporting me on Patreon. With your support I will not only have more time to create videos like these but you will get access to a ton of bonus content. You'll get access to all of the Blender project files I use in my videos. You find the tutorials too fast sometimes? I've got you covered. Follow me step by step with full length real time tutorial recordings. You'll get full resolution downloads of all the artworks and, best of all, Patreon exclusive access to all of my CG assets to get your digital art to the next level. Just click the first link in the description or go to patreon.com slash rescan. Thanks for your support and let's get on with the tutorial. Now I'm going to go back to the sculpting phase because I am um, looking at the rendered view. I didn't feel like uh, the holes were deep enough. Um, you can really see that if I catch enough light, everything is fine, but uh, they didn't do it for me. So I uh, went back in with a pinch brush and a drawing brush to make the edges a bit harsher, to deepen the holes in this case. And um, I went back into the shading tab, moved the cheese uh, text a bit up because um, it was actually penetrating through the ground, which I didn't want. And I played around with the reflection, made it a bit more reflective. And now um, I'm going to add in uh, the um, background light in a lot of tutorials like this one if you where you have an infinite background you can add in this um, this uh, background spotlight with a pretty high intensity but not too high of course and a pretty large radius to give kind of a vignette effect it illuminates the background and creates a small vignette to yeah uh, draw the attention a bit more into the to the uh, letter. This is used in product photography a lot of times where they want to draw the attention into the main product by illuminating it um, from the back. So with this um, done, I think now um, I'm going to uh, work a bit on the lights, move them a bit back and forth, always um, have, have a look at the shading and how they interact with um, the cheese, make them a bit smaller if you feel like the light source is too broad, make them a bit uh, harsher by scaling them in. So um, there are different ways to, uh, to achieve very cool effects. Since the cheese texture is looking a bit too uniform uh, at the moment, I am going to add in a new noise texture and add in a color ramp. And uh, with this color ramp, I'm going to define uh, the colors. Um, uh, first, choose the left slider as the original color, the second one too, and then change the second one a bit more into a, a, um, a more orange color, uh, then add in an, uh, another one, which is a bit more on the yellowish side and play with lighting uh, intensities, add in a second color ramp right before that and crush the both uh, sliders a bit to create kind of an interesting color contrast. And this will be our base color, which will be fed into the um, base color slot of our text. And this will get a lot of variation and may look a bit more real uh, because no real cheese has uh, the whole uh, is, is a completely uniform color uh, they are all a bit different and um, yeah I think this looks pretty fine for me um, you could for example go in and use this um, this texture to feed it into the um, subdivision surface a uh, sub sub surface scattering <laughs> uh, this is what I meant uh, and this will um, further enhance this effect but I think we're fine um, right now uh, now I'm going to add in a new empty and this will be our focus empty, uh, as it is with um, all of these tutorials. Um, I rename it to focus empty and then I'm going to go into the camera settings um, after I moved it all in their respective uh, collections. I'm going to go into the camera settings and I'm choosing our focus empty as our empty object, our focus on object, reducing the f-stop a bit to increase the blurriness. And these are the small details that um, 
enhance your image a bit. Now, for the render settings, I'm leaving everything as is. Um, I changed the intensity of our texture a bit, reduced it a bit, and then hit render. So, the next step will be post-processing in DaVinci Resolve. What is DaVinci Resolve? It is basically uh, Hollywood's most advanced color corrector. This is uh, at least how they market themselves. It has a ton of different options to, um, to change the color and uh, ma manipulate the color of um, films. And this is what it's used most for, for feature films, color grading in feature films. But there is actually a free version available, uh, not the studio version. And this is the one we are going to use now. It's always interesting to try out something different. Um, this will Further expand your toolset, and if it's free, this is of course great. It is not open source, but it will definitely be very helpful if you want to create some different effects. Since the software is normally used in feature film production and video, we are now going to use it in a completely different way today. But um, there are other tools, um, this is perfectly fine, and um, it is, uh, as well as Blender's compositor, it is a node based workflow, so nothing too uncommon there um, and uh, yeah now let's uh, get into the first note and in to increase the contrast a bit and play around a bit with the pivot to set a different um, set a different pivot where our contrast applies let's press alt s to add in a new note this is how this works right here and let's go into the curves adjustment and this is the same it's the, sa the same stuff as it is in Blender. Let's simply adjust the curves to give it a bit more contrast. Play around with a mid-tone. Alt-S to add a new node again. Let's go into these, uh, into these mask settings and create a mask for our vignette. Let's invert this mask and drag the handle of the curves adjustment inside of this node a bit down. And as you see here, this, will, this is a, quickly w a quick way to create a vignette. You can adjust the softness property right here, or you can use the handles inside of the image to make the mask a bit softer. And um, yeah, let's further refine our curves. This looks pretty cool. This um, draws the attention to the center of the scene. Let's go into the open effects um, uh, panels and um, in a new node, apply a glow fill uh, filter. Uh, play around with this uh, intensity and the threshold to kind of create this bloom effect. It's a pretty, pretty fast way to create that and it's pretty well optimized. Let's uh, add in another, another effect on a, uh, on a second node and make a bit of more broader adjustments and again reduce the intensity to only a small amount to give uh, this image a bit more atmosphere and to make it pop even more. I think it's a bit too strong at the moment, but uh, I will reduce this later on. And uh, with the different settings, you can really see how this affects the image. And reduce it to only a very, very, very small amount of glow. Play around with the blending modes. I personally like the screen blending mode because uh, it doesn't tend to over uh, over um, expose the image at um, the, especially at the bright bright parts. Control D to enable and disable the nodes and to have a look at how this looks. Let's go in and drag in a zoom blur adjustment layer and blur it a bit in the corners, um, which gives a pretty cool effect. It's kind of like the lens distortion effect in um, in Blender, but uh, only a small amount should do the job. Adding some lens imperfections. On the next node, I'm going to add in a contrast pop node. Enable and disable, I see what it does, and increase the amount a bit to further increase the contrast, especially in the center parts mm, and especially in the in the holes of the cheese. With uh, this lens reflections um, effect, you can create some lens artifacts and uh, some broader glows. Um, you can do that if you like it, but I'm not uh, very sure if I do. Um, you can use light rays to shine some light rays from behind the text, uh, but I think that doesn't uh, look very good in this case. 
Um, with this filter, you can add in a bit more, um, bit more micro contrast. And this is an effect I personally really like um, because it's not over the top and it gives a bit and it enhances a bit more of the image. And uh, I think uh, this is what I like. An effect uh, I am definitely going to add in is the film grain effect. Uh, and I uh, tend to use this as the last effect in the, um, in the chain because uh, this really brings everything together. It adds artificial grain and uh, really um, merges all of the previous effect together. And uh, it is pretty subtle, but it uh, adds to the final image. And this could be in an animated version as well. Um, uh, this could be animated noise, but I think um, it does the job well for images. And uh, here I'm reducing a bit of contrast um, right before the last effect, because I felt that it was missing, uh, the, that the contrast was a bit too strong. And um, I'm playing around with this high and low slider to really look at the histogram and make sure nothing is crushing, nothing is going over 100, because else um, the highlights would be blowing out. And here you can see the before and after. Pretty amazing what you can do with a software that is actually not intended for that use. So, Finally, let's go in and um, go to the hue versus saturation value slider and reduce a bit of the red color to make the yellow pop out a bit more. Uh, you can sample the color with um, uh, the eyedropper tool and um, I think this was it for the final adjustments. Now let's ex export it as a video and um, inside the video settings um, have a look at an image format. For example, EXR would be something like that. Um, and in the timeline you can see uh, it actually placed, I think, um, a few frames uh, of this um, uh, image. And with the in and out slider you can now limit this to just one frame. Select your preferred location where you want to save that. Rename your file and it will render out only one frame. You can go into these settings to further refine what you're seeing there. Let's add it to the render queue, render it. And with that out of the way, I think we're done for today. Consider subscribing to me on Patreon to get access to the project files for this tutorial. Leave a like on this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.